one person left a comment that says, uh, I hear a lot of talk about the importance of edges. I'm wondering what you have to say about that. What difference does it make if all my edges are sharp as long as they show my shapes right? You'll be surprised how much difference there is. In fact, edges is one of the most important characteristics that we have in our images. Or the way, one of the most important things we can do to our images is control the edges. Because it's the edges that determine lots of, lots of things happening in the whole painting. So if every edge of every shape in the painting is sharp, like this person described, the painting's going to look flat no matter what you do. It's going to look flat and it's going to look discombobulated. It's going to, it's going to look more comical or more like a comic strip than it does a painting with images with forms and atmosphere. So one way that we can learn how to use principles, principles, things that do things for things to other things, uh, is to, to ask that question, well, what does it do? How does it function? How does an edge function? So that's what I want to show you. And perhaps, and then I want to show you an example, one small example of how the edges are functioning in, in a painting of one of the masters. First of all, let's just look at how we control, what they do, what these edges do, and how they function. Now, the sharp edges, they focus the images and the shapes. So if, if all the edges are sharp, that means the whole thing is going to be in focus. But you might not want to know that. But let's look at how uh, what that looks like, what a sharp edge looks like. And I'll just uh, just use some paint here. And now I'm going to make the sharpest edge I know how to make, and that is just by using a, a stencil like this. You can, you can make a sharp edge with a brush. You can make a, a sharp edge with a palette knife. But I just want to use this stencil here to be sure that this edge is just as sharp as I can make it. I'll make it sharp on that side. And I'll make it sharp. Let's turn it this way. Make it sharp on this side. So using the same color, we'll just make that edge very, very sharp. Now you can already see clear and crisp that is. Now if we put another color beside it, and I just, uh, uh, well I could put a color beside it that is maybe close to the value of that color, or it doesn't matter what color I put beside it. But one thing that we do know is that the stronger the value contrast is between the edges, the sharper they are. But let's just do this. Let's, let's just take right here where we made that sharp edge Let's make another sharp edge right beside it. I didn't get quite enough paint in the brush. You get a little bit more of that paint in the brush. And I'm going to uh, just make that like that. And now, you see how sharp that is? Very, very sharp, very much in focus. Now, let me show you something else that will, will uh, to support what I just said. And that is that the sharper the contrast, the sharper the uh, the, uh, the the stronger the contrast, the sharper the edge. So let's just do this right here. Let's put a a, a, some, a stroke on there that is darker, and you can see it. See how this is this stands out. This gets your attention, and that's what strong value contrast does. It gets your attention. It gets the eyes' attention. Can you see now? looking at this dark value against the light, but lighter value there, uh, your eye goes there. That gives you gives, gets more attention. And that, now, now this edge doesn't look quite so sharp as it did, as it does now. You see that? Here, you see it still feels sharp. Here, 
You see, now this edge feels sharp, but then when I do this, that edge doesn't feel quite so sharp. So the value of contrast is going to also influence how sharp an edge, or all the kinds of edges we have, the value of contrast is going to play a large role in that. How sharp is the edge? Now, so that gets your attention. That brings that brings it into focus. It's total focus when the edges are sharp. The slightly blurred edge, also known as fumato, that's one that uh, Leonardo's given credit for discovering and using because before his time in the Middle Ages, paintings done in the Middle Ages, all the edges were made the same. But Leonardo wanted to show the feeling of the figure in space, the figure in atmosphere. And he discovered if you slightly blur the edges, then you get that feeling of the figure in space. Mona Lisa is the biggest example. Everybody knows about Mona Lisa. My Lord knows how many, um, how many things have been done to the Mona Lisa image. But in Leonardo's original version, uh, when you look really closely at the edges, you see that they, all the edges are slightly blurred, slightly blended uh, together. And so what we do there is we try to get those edges just a little bit softer. Now I'm going to use this one, keep this one sharp. I'm going to use this one to show you that. So I'm going to pull all the paint out of the brush and just give it a little bit of a gentle stroke. And see, just a little gentle stroke like that gives a very slight blur to the edge. And that then when you're making images and they have the variation in values, though it makes the image feel uh, more like it's in uh, in an atmosphere, it makes it feel real or like it's sitting in space rather than in just on a flat surface. So that's a slightly blur blurred edge. And then we have edges that have other degrees of being blurred and make uh, and they make the atmospheric space uh, or make it they make the atmospheric space feel broader or thick thicker but they also enable the focused edge to feel sharper. So the more blurred edges are around a focused shape or focused edge, the sharper this feels. Now let's show you that. So we're going to get that even more blurred. So now we have the sharp and the slightly blurred, this fumata edge, and then we're going to give it a little bit more. Now this time I'm going to give that, we'll give just a little bit of a wiggle, and then bring the stroke down. You see that's getting more and more blurred. And you can see now, this is beginning to feel like this is moving over here. That's how we begin to make gradations. It's by blending one value or one color into the other. Uh, and, and there are several ways to do that, but this is the, the simplest way. Then there's the lost edge. Now the lost edge will enable one shape to move right into another one without you realizing that you have two edges there. Now this is sort of an, an extreme here, but let's just do, let's put some more, let's put a different color about the same value. See if I can get that about the same value. I'm going to just give a, a little mixture. Let's put a little bit more of that blue in here, like there, and give a little bit of a mixture here. Let's see, is that going to be the same value? It's pretty much the same value range. Let's get a little bit more of that color in there. And instead, this time, I'm going to go ahead and just put put those two side by side like that. And see, we have there. So if this were like a shape, if this were a shape, and this were the negative space of a shape, and now we have the blurred edge, which is very much like that. So you visually, your eyes are moving smoothly from this one to this one. But if we get those lost, we can blend them so that you can't tell where one edge ends and the other begins. And just by pulling your brush over and over, also creating kind of a, an angle with the brush and giving it a light little zigzag down like that, you can cause those edges to totally blend one into the other. There we go right there. The edges totally blend one into the other so the edge gets lost. Now, this is a wonderful way of, uh, of creating that feeling that the space, the, the shape merges into space. Lost edges are used a lot of time by artists 
uh, simply to make everything feel unified, make everything feel united. It also helps the sharper edges to come into focus. It also helps the blurred edges to feel a little bit more focus. So with the lost edges will do that. And then the other kind of edge has a series of variations. That is the rough edge. It communicates texture. Now we'll use that rough edge when we have textures uh, such as grass or, or maybe uh, I can think of a number of things where you have a zigzag, kind of a zigzag edge or you might have a gritty looking edge. What, whatever word you could use to decide, describe texture you would use for that edge. And we might say we would uh, I'll show you a little example of that with something like, let's go right over here for that. Let me get just a little bit of the linseed oil in this, kind of loosen that paint up a little bit. All right, right here. Now, if we do something like that, you might see an edge that looks like that. This edge right here, where the edge itself kind of has that zigzag on, in it. And we can do other things with our brushes. Um, and I've done this in other quick tips too where I've shown you this demonstration of how you can uh, take uh, one color, a color that's beneath a color. Let's, let's get this a little bit lighter right here and let's just use this one for that. Right there, get that good and loaded with a lighter color and show you how you can use the brush and, and, and all you need to do is to pull the brush up and like that to get that feeling of a uh, of one color. Let's move that right. Let's do this like this. Okay, now we pull that brush up. You see there? Then you can get that sort of zigzag edge that we can often use to create grasses and things like that. And I've shown you ways to do that with the fan brush. Uh, um, I've shown you other other videos where I'm talking about various brushes te brush techniques where you pull one color on top of the other, but you get that little zigzag edge there. Shows texture. Many of the, many of the images that we make uh, have texture in them, and how we form those edges can help communicate that texture. All right, so you see we have at least five major kinds of edges. They all have a function. They do stuff. They do stuff. Your eye responds to what that edge is doing. The way your eye responds to it uh, will then be determined by what the painter does. And so if the painter using sh uses the sharp edges, it's going to cause your eye just to come to a rolling halt between those edges just momentarily. But sharp edges will call your attention to them. The eye will go to them. It, bring, it feels totally in focus. Uh, but then if the edge is slightly blurred, the eye begins to flow, to move smooth. The, it, the eye moves, or you might say that's kind of a transition type edge, where the eye glides from one shape to the other very gradually. Un, it's not, you're not aware of it, but when you're seeing it, it feels like a figure in space or a person in space, animal in space, especially where all you see images where there's hair coming over the face, but it, it doesn't feel all cut off and clipped like you see so much done, then your eye glides through that and it reads it uh, so that it feels united. It feels like it belongs. The, the, the Both degrees of the blurred images will do that. They enable the eye to glide from one shape into the other. The lost edge, you just move straight through it. You don't even realize. You'll see by indications, other indications in a, shape, you'll, you'll be able to read and you'll be able to fill in, you fill in mentally on what that edge is doing and sometimes you think you see an edge there but you don't really, if you look at it analytically, the edge will be gone. Go to various artist sites, uh, Richard Schmidt does that an awful lot beautifully, but many of our master artists will use that lost edge and, and use it so beautifully. And then, of course, the rough edge, which describes the texture. So if you keep in mind and practice the five different kinds of edges, practice them according to what they do, and then honor that in your paintings. Find ways in your paintings where you want things, where you want the eye to go, where you want the viewer to go. That's where you're going to make your edges the sharpest. Uh, and in areas where you want to be sure that you have it feeling like it's in three-dimensional space, You'll want to slightly blur those edges. 
in places where you would want to not pull the eye quite in, but keep the focus in your whatever area of interest or what, whatever you're trying to, uh, to say there in the painting. Remember that when you blur the edges, that also enables the sharper edges to feel sharper. And then, of course, the lost edge. So play with those edges, and I think you will discover, in answer to this person's uh, question, you'll discover how important edges are to the way you paint. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.